This conference will now be recorded. Uh, previous class we discussed about the man face it rang and when part of the uh, differences between arterial and venous structures in their basic histology, which suits their function. So coming to veins, veins are distensible and arteries are, arteries need to complete so they are more muscular. And veins do have uh, one way valves which which help blood to transfer uh, blood to flow from in only one direction. Any reflex because of the failure of the walls or due to incompetent per perpetrators would lead to varicose veins and uh, chronic venous insufficiency. These are the terms you need to remember for your uh, regular exams. And in OPD, you do come across regular number of cases in of peripheral vascular disease, both regarding to the arterial and venous systems. And uh, Coming to this uh, peripheral vascular disease, uh, the main significant feature is a reduce, a reduction in the uh, oxygen carrying capacity means, means secondary to reduction of uh, blood flow. So in case of a peripheral vascular disease, there will be ischemic pain, which is severe in nature. If it is an acute event, there won't be any collateral formation. If it is a chronic event, because of uh, collateral formation and partial compensation of uh, blood supply, there will be minimal symptoms due to collaterals taking the responsibility of the main vein and subsiding in the way in which the blood originally flows. So when we will face symptoms in case of peripheral vascular disease, the symptoms are mostly in, seen after when the day are, when the demand is more than supply, there will be discrepancy in the oxygen carrying uh, oxygen supply. So mostly uh, arterial disorders and arterial ischemia symptoms are mostly commonly seen after the involved muscle gets into exercise. So most commonly peripheral arterial disease it is more common in the calf. Calf secondary to in in older adults the most common cause is atherosclerosis. In acute events it is a thrombus and embolization. Uh, in in younger patients, there could be a lot of genital genital issues, which could be protein C protein S deficiency, antithrombin deficiency, and homocystinuria. There are a lot of events which could cause a hypercoagulability of the blood, polycythemia, and all. These hypercoagulability of the blood could lead to increased viscosity and decreased blood flow, which could lead to ischemic symptoms. Thing is, uh, mostly these symptoms are seen when the previous class I told you what do you mean by claudication pain. In Latin, the word claudication means to limp. Claudication means to limp. Limping, uh, the person after traveling for a particular amount of distance, which is known as claudication distance, starts feeling pain in the calf region. This pain, most commonly seen in the claudication region, is the most common region most common artery involved is a superficial femoral artery. So, distal to the super, uh, superficial femoral artery, the symptoms are seen. So, superficial femoral and the muscle group supplied by the relevant uh, artery which got occluded shows these symptoms. So, as a most common artery involved is superficial femoral artery, the symptoms are most commonly seen in the calf muscles. And as we already discussed, Whenever there is a discrepancy between the oxygen supply and the oxygen demand, symptoms are uh, seen. So the thing is, there are common causes, mostly acute events and uh, chronic events. In acute events, the most common disease which you need to remember is the Verger's disease. And in chronic diseases, the thing which you need to mostly consider is the atherosclerosis in elderly, elderly patients, secondary to cholesterol and all formation of atherosclerotic plaques. These plagues, which cause weakening of the intimal layer and uh, occlusion of blood supply, for simultaneously thinning out of the media and all secondary changes can happen. Depending upon the thickness of the plague, there will be a gradual reduction in the blood supply. 
So for claudication point, we see there are few characteristics. One is the claudication distance. Claudication distance in in particular will remain constant even uh, remains constant in every time because the patient after traveling for a certain amount of distance known as a claudication distance starts experiencing pain then this pain is relieved with rest because with rest the muscles come into uh, those muscles which are involved in the exercising and uh, gradually involved in activity come to rest the oxygen supply diminishes uh, the oxygen requirement is gets reduced and so, so there won't be any ischemic pain so after taking rest for a particular period of time, the, pa uh, the patient can resume walk and once again he starts feeling because that is the point at which the oxygen supply and the demand is mismatching. So gradually in the course of the disease, as the disease progresses, the claudication distance reduces. Previously, the patient could walk for roughly about a half a kilometer, 500 meters or 400 meters and then he might start claudication pain. As the lesion progresses, and the atherosclerotic plaque enlarges, the blood supply decreases. So after some period, the patient starts feeling the uh, pain, the radial characteristic pain of claudication, which is reproducible at the same distance. In the gradual course of the disease, it can start from uh, around 200 meters and 100 meters. And finally, there is a phase known as, there is a term which you need to remember, critical limb ischemia. Simple, the, uh, the term itself says, Critical limb ischemia means behind this point. Critical limb ischemia, uh, limb salvage is critical. So beyond this point of critical limb ischemia, beyond this point of critical limb ischemia, the patient, the limb of the patient cannot be salvaged. That is the borderline point between salvageable and non-salvageable. Mostly post that uh, critical limb ischemic there will be gangrenous changes. As you already know, gangrene is an irreversible changes, which is microscopic uh, death of the tissue, the super added putrefaction and all. So there will be death of the tissue or it could be related to ulcer formation. These ulcers, they don't heal properly. For any wound to heal properly, he, firstly, there would be an inflammation. After any wound uh, healing process, if you take a look, uh, either in the traumatic wounds or anything, first the involved area will have an inflammatory response and the signs of inflammation, there would be local vasodilation and recruitment of uh, macrophages and other lymphocytes and all to fight and combat. And there will be formation of platelet plug here. As the blood supply is already reduced here, these, these patients, these ulcers take a long time to heal because there won't be any proper blood supply. There, uh, there could, they could not mind the same healing response as compared to their normal peers. So the thing is, gradually, gradually there will be decreased wound healing, and uh, if it is accompanied by secondary neuropathy, ischemic pain is very severe. Means uh, when it comes to ischemic pain, the patient usually can not uh, tolerate the pain, and uh, which is deep seated, very it's not super which is deep seated and uh, continuous, uh, continuous amount of uh, severe pain, severe uh, gripping type of pain in pain which is not subsided. Uh, one more difference between the arterial and the venous system, venous claudication pain, venous pain is uh, placing the limb at a level higher than the heart when the patient sleeps patient limb should be kept at a point above the level of the heart of the patient. So there should be foot and elevation. Foot and elevation by placing two pillows or something. The foot should be at a higher level than compared to the heart. So oh, this reduces the symptoms which aids in uh, return of blood by gravity and it helps in, in reducing the symptoms of venous disease. In contrast, the arterial disease symptoms are aggravated by lifting the limb. So there are few Berger's positional tests and exercises. The, there is an angle known as Berger's angle, which means after uh, after lifting the patient to a certain amount of uh, after lifting the limb to a certain amount of angle, the patient start experiencing 
symptoms and there will be discoloration of the limb from the normal regular limb these uh, changes are classically observed in the europeans and in the americans which are uh, in fair skin people what i mean to say is in fair skin people these changes are classically observed in dark skin people they are a little tough to elicit this uh, subtle color changes and all the patient can start uh, complaining of symptoms normally even if you lift your like if you lift your lower limbs uh, to an angle of 90 degrees there won't be you won't experience any severe pain or uh, there won't be any change in the color of the limb whereas in cases of uh, depending upon this angle whether it is uh, where the upon how upon raising the limb to which angle the patient is experiencing symptoms if it is roughly less than 20 to 30 degrees in uh, 30 degrees it is known as severe uh, severe symptoms so coming back to the peripheral vascular disease now we can you can observe sorry someone asking a question are you able to listen it's up yes, to you yes sir uh, most of the in chronic cases the most common cause is atherosclerosis there will be uh, as i already told you there will be atherosclerotic plaque formation which gradually recruited by foamy macrophages and other inflammatory cells there will be a central fibrinous cap surrounded by peripheral exudate so this gradually causes reduction in symptoms in case of acute limb ischemia uh, means there are no changes there are no compensatory collateral formation and all most common cause is an embolus formation in any valvular heart disease or disorder anything there will be sudden dislodgement of an embolus these embolus after traveling in the blood circulation for certain amount of time it occludes the point at which the blood vessel is narrow and uh, the size of the embolus fits the lumen of the blood vessel then it causes symptoms pertaining to that or none so peripheral any vascular disease symptoms as i already told you arterial arterial ischemic symptoms patient start experiencing after the uh, group of muscles involved goes into activity similarly uh, similarly you could also see the myocardial infarction or any intestinal angina symptoms this intestinal angina symptoms in visceral organs intestinal angina symptoms uh, there will be cytophobia remember the time cytophobia means fear of food intake because as soon as you ingest food after a period of uh, so called pavlov's experiment and uh, three phases of digestion cephalic phase and all cephalic phase gastric phase and all the patient whenever your intestine start uh, the process of digestion then the patient starts experiencing symptoms be it in a superior mesentery artery embolus or any other thing so whenever the muscles muscle group involved starts uh, activity the patient starts experiencing symptoms so that's why after a period of one or two hours after food intake these patients start experiencing severe pain so in order to avoid that severe pain gradually these patients uh, they reduce the amount of food take, food intake and gradually it results in them chronic weight loss and this term is known as cytophobia food fear or intestinal angina just similar to the uh, myocardial infection and all here also whenever the uh, intestine start the process of digestion then the patient starts experiencing symptoms one more thing as i already told you coagulability of the blood and uh, viscosity depending upon those things uh, hypercoagulable disorders they, they could cause symptoms in younger younger ages because there will be increased process increased uh, coagulability of the blood and uh, luminal narrowing and consequently the same symptoms and hypertension uh, the inflammatory syndrome and in insulin resistant metabolic syndrome and all so coming to uh, the differences between the arterial and venous insufficiency arterial insufficiency means decrease in the blood flow producing ischemia so the patient start experiencing ischemic pain so obviously the involved on uh, arteries you could the pulses are usually diminished or absent on the contrary in venous insufficiency pulses are present and uh, 
in cases of venous insufficiency there is decreased venous return from the peripheral we all know that uh, gastrocnemius and calf together are known as a soleus together are known as peripheral heart which helps in pumping of the blood from the periphery to the heart so so what happens when there is venous insufficiency there won't be proper venous return and there will be peripheral pooling of the blood in the peripheral veins which could lead to guttering of the veins because uh, these veins as they are non compliant blood gets pooled in the periphery and there is decreased venous return to the heart interfering with the changes so arterial insufficiency the pain is severe and sharp and stabbing because of the ischemic it is also known as uh, the pain classically involved is described as a cry of the dying nerves so as the arteries carry oxygen along with nutrients there will be decreased growth of the tissue ischemic ulcers we already so uh, because of a poor blood supply these ischemic ulcers are difficult to treat as the blood supply is poor uh, it takes longer time to heal those for those ulcers to heal unless the contributing factor of uh, arterial insufficiency is corrected they heal poorly and in venous insufficiency there will be peripheral stasis or pooling of the blood because secondary to the pooling of the blood and all there could be edematous edematous changes in the skin changes so there would because of secondary chronic venous insufficiency and uh, you also need to remember another term known as ambulatory venous hypertension normally uh, while standing the column of uh, the pressure is measured as uh, from the lower limb to the right atrium this pressure this venous column pressure gradually reduces when the patient start walking so gradually after after walking this pressure reduces what happens in chronic venous insufficiency and ambulatory venous hypertension it is a paradoxical term ambulatory venous hypertension means uh, whenever the patient starts ambulating or walking and all instead of uh, the pressure to reduce there will be increased pressure so that's why it is known as the main contributing factor is the ambulatory venous hypertension so and uh, formation of venous ulcer uh, classically the venous ulcer are seen above the medial ma malleolus most com why it is seen above the medial malleolus it parallels the line of uh, perforators which is known as the lenten's line of perforators so coming to these changes and all uh, secondary to these changes whenever we start comparing an arterial and venous disease because decreased venous supply the peripheries will be cold and there will be loss of air and all so in, because of increased pooling of blood in the peripheral veins there will be warm and secondary to these changes in the hemosiderin accumulation there will be pigmentation there will be thickening of the skin sclerosis uh, classic in, in venous uh, diseases the post term is known as lipodermatosclerosis means sclerosis means thickening of the skin and there will be pigmentation leads to there will be pigmentation leading to hemosiderin pigmentation leading to discoloration in case of arterial disease the pain is sharp and stabbing the venous disease pain is aching and cramping type of pain uh, venous uh, pain pertaining to the venous disease is classically seen whenever the patient stands prolonged for a longer amount of time or you could uh, clearly ask the patient whether he is experiencing more symptoms towards the end of the day means uh, patient after doing all the activity and towards the end of the day the pain gradually starts increasing and it is pain is relieved pain is relieved by keeping the limb above the level of heart that is foot and elevation in in, play, in terms of arterial disease there will be sharp and stabbing pain instead of elevating the pain lowering of the feet can relieve the pain, pain in case of arterial disease as we already know because of decreased blood supply and all uh, these ulcers are severely painful there will uh, it is it is not covered with a uh, proper granulation tissue because it is poor blood supply so the ulcers are classically seen where there is a less amount of uh, collateral formation and end arterial areas likely known as uh, heels toes and the dorsum of the foot 
so coming to venous ulcers classical location as it already known venous this is most commonly seen in the gaiter area means uh, the old and french people they used to wear the shoes like just like in snow or snow whenever you travel in snow they will they will offer you rubber boots and all that area is known as gaiter region this gaiter region is commonly involved in case of venous disease in venous disease uh, it is covered with uh, pale granulation tissue as soon as you look at the answer there will be pinkish in color not uh, there won't be red granulation tissue it will be pale granulation tissue classically seen above the medial malleolus so as involved segment is arteries the, uh, the pulse is often diminished or uh, absent in case of arterial disease whereas in venous disease the involved uh, involved system is venous system so the pulses are usually present there will be six piece in case of arterial disease you could know pain out of proportion coagular that may have pulseness, pulseness and all so because of secondary pooling of the blood and there is secondary hemocytin accumulation leading to pigmentation there will be lipodermatous sclerosis and edema edema of skin involved so that is in venous disease whereas in case of arterial disease this pain is infrequent so coming to the risk factors elderly age gradually there will be hypertension diabetes and metabolic syndrome and all gradually wear and tear of the blood vessels blood vessels become they become uh, thin walled and less elastic so gradually there will be increased calcification and all male males are more prone and because of cigarette smoking nicotine present in the cigarettes could cause vasoconstriction and carbon monoxide carbon dioxide can compete with the uh, oxygen transport to the tissue more so with the carbon monoxide and poisoning and all so hypertension there will be secondary changes in the blood vessel the elastic tissue is replaced by fibrous collagen tissue and all hyperlipidemia increased atherosclerotic plaque and uh, formation and all obesity excess fat excess cholesterol leads to atherosclerosis and so lack of physical activity is a sedentary lifestyle there will be decreased muscle muscle contraction will be minimal so lack of physical activity promotes if there is physical activity so in case of a uh, peripheral vascular disease and verger's uh, disease there are certain exercises minimal physical activity could promote the collateral formation and diabetes mellitus and atherosclerosis and with this uh, today i conclude my class we'll come in the next class just wait for a few minutes Uh, the concept, then see here please and uh, all of the attendants in this group is it clear will connect it screenshot please come huh screenshot please come huh स्क्रीनशॉट तीस पंप चेतन के एक डा क्लर्क को नार्गा दा वाल के एक सर ये आईटी सेलर लेवर इतने क्लासेस करा लगा सर अटेंडेंस पंप इस तरह ये अंडर दे कर सर्जरी डिपार्टमेंट लेन रोल लेस कुंडर
Okay, you people also uh, study regarding peripheral vascular disease at all if possible. The next class will be on uh, varicose veins and all. Just to complete complete this uh, arterial venous system. There is another class we could discuss about the lymphatic center. Sir, this one is. Thank you. 